Spencer. Goodness, he's not going to pass it as he does. Come Oh, Spencer! Oh, this is amazing! Come on, Spencer. He's got the foot down. And Spencer scores. And this will probably win the game. Is there anyone that personifies Māori rugby like King Carlos? Carlos Spencer, unpredictable competitor hero. After a decade overseas, Carlos is back living in Aotearoa and was spotted online beating his son in some rugby trick shots. Oh, you're not going to believe it! Is it fair to say that you're quite a competitive person? Ah, uh, very competitive, especially at this age. <laughs> you're watching a movie together and something rude pops up and your parents, you know, tell their kids to stop watching. I used to actually have to do that with my um, my mum and my aunties when the Toffee Pops ad actually came <laughs> oh, on. That wasn't rude, was it? <laughs> I still get crap for it today. Obviously all about promoting yourself back then and I suppose at the time I never thought it would create, you know, so much talk. And... Did you realise um, how much of a role model you were? Probably wasn't until started, you know, people started to get the Carlos Spencer hairdo and for me that was, that was an awesome feeling to know that these young kids were looking up to me and you know, they wanted a hairdo like me, so it was, a, it was a pretty cool feeling. Who did you draw inspiration of in, in terms of your style of rugby, or did, did you just kind of create it yourself? To be honest, I probably created it myself. You know, I grew up with a rugby ball in my hand. I grew up with any kind of ball, you know. After school, mate, I'd be always with my mates, you know, whether it was on the road, stubbing our toes or over at the park, just mucking around, having fun. Yeah. You know, I just managed to take a few of those things I you know, grew up doing onto the onto the big stage. And you got praised a lot in your career and like any top player, sometimes you guys get critiqued and criticised. How did you handle that um, when you get criticised? you got to have thick skin. I was one of those players who pushed boundaries yes. and I knew that and I knew that's the way I was and I was never going to change. Um, but for me it was all about take on the criticism, you know, take on the feedback, you know, whatever you don't like, just spin it and um, just use it as motivation. I think the worst thing around that was obviously how the family took it, as where for me it just didn't bother me. Like I said, it motivated me in some ways and it just came with the territory. Tell Māori, how much of that um, have to play in your upbringing? Not much to be honest. I did a little bit of Māori culture at school. Looking back on it now, I wish I'd done more. It's a shame really because I, I really wish I, I did you know, have a bit more te reo in my life growing up, mm. just the way it was. Um, there's still time. I'm still only young. <laughs> hey. How would you define Māori rugby? Well, I just think it's probably the, to be able to express yourself mm. and have fun. You're a part of actually two quite iconic Māori All Black teams. We'll start with 1994. It's the first Māori All Blacks team to ever go to South Africa. It was my first year away from home, you know, and first year in, in the big smoke. And I was still, you know, trying to adapt to, to being away from, from mum. To obviously get that call up. Um, at such a young age and to be, I suppose, amongst that group of um, elite players at that time was, first of all, made a proud moment, not only for me, but for the family. You know, you'd, you'd heard stories about South Africa and, you know, was it safe enough to, to go there and, um, mate, she was all pretty eye-opening mm. for, for such a guy like myself coming from a small town like Levin and obviously to be selected for that team was, man, was, was a privilege and, a, and an honour and um, something I'll never forget. Fast forward to 2005, um, you're in the Māori All Blacks team, who have never beaten the British and Irish Lions before. Yeah, and that was my last game in New Zealand. Yeah. Um, and for me, I suppose I couldn't probably ask for a, a more fitting way to, to finish up my career, to play for a team that I've got so much pride and respect for finish with, a, I suppose, a coach like Matt Tapo, who I've got so much respect for, mate, I, I left happy and I left knowing that I've done everything I can and it was my time to go, but for me, what a way to leave, you know, wearing that mouldy jersey, beating the British and Irish Lions, boom, awesome.